picked this little guy up on the road around 2.30 a.m. this morning on the way back from Ottawa. Somebody hit him with a little car, pieces of car all over the place. This is about 80, 90 pounds. He's going to be tender eating, that's for sure. Little bear over there didn't know what to make of him at first. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Got some real nice meat. The small ones like this are like a cross between beef and pork. It's like a very light colored meat. Uh, you want to get these cut up and in the freezer as soon as possible because the more you let them hang, the tougher and drier they get. But this sucker's going to be tender. The ribs are delicious on these things. And the liver on a yearling like this, or maybe a second year cub, it's a female, uh, are, is delicious. Absolutely incredible. It's like you're eating prime rib or something. Awesome little bear. Thank you Lord for the meat. It'll go right nice in the freezer right now. It's a bear. It's a little bear. It's a little bear. It's a little bearsy. It's a little black bearsy. Yeah. All right, don't get too close. You break catches weasels or whatever he's got. Okay. I think we're gonna try to skin him cased. It'd be different. I'll give it a shot. Well, there you have it. We're skinning them cased. It'll be interesting. I may send it to the taxidermist to get it tanned. It's coming out pretty good actually. Some beautiful meat on that sucker, eh? Nice hams. See the meat's a lot lighter than on a older bear. It's not as uh not as dark and it gets even lighter than that. With the younger ones, but that's gonna be one tasty bear. That's right, skinning a bear cased. This ought to be cool. Watch out, bear. Okay, bear, watch out. Well, you're able to get them up a little bit more, and I'll show you how I. I'll tell you, these straps are great. I mean, look at these. These buckles, man, they really pull up, no problem. Pull that thing up with ease. Problem is, it's pretty low ceiling. Sort of limited for space here, as you can see. But uh, that works. I got it up off the ground a little bit more. So I think I can work with that. Let's see how we can get around these arms. They're a little bit tricky, but they take a little more time, but we can get it. Grab my knife here. Yeah. Grab my knife here. There we go. Alright. Another good reason to wear gloves is tularemia. You don't want that. I'm not sure if bears have it, but things like muskrats do. Coons, you never know what they got. So, it's been a while since I trapped many, many moons. Many years. Prices went up last year for furs, and now they dropped down because of the crisis over there in Russia, which is too bad. Wish people can get along. Just, you know, I think having a place to hunt and fish is important for for men. You know, I think maybe the 
the uh, fix for the Middle East is make a whole bunch of fishing ponds. Give them some recreation and something to harvest that they can take home for food. Those people need decent food. You know, I think if they have recreation and food, I think you don't worry about fighting. You know? People don't have much to go by and hardly a tree to hide behind. It's pretty disparaging. I say go plant some trees and dig some ponds. They can fill them full of trout and they can hunt ducks and during the hunting season. And <coughs> water brings wildlife. We know that here in Canada, that's a no-brainer. Heck, we'll give them some if they want it. Give them some trout, give them some... Let them uh, be their own stewards of the land. I say fill Gaza with fishing ponds and forests and give the people the right to hunt and fish. I think that... That might change some things. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I don't worry about fighting if I... Good place to hunt and fish. Who cares? Don't take that away from us, though. Get our blood. Yeah, so we're just working that down around the arms. And I think jobs like this, and small jobs like sweeping a floor or doing the dishes, or you know, makes you think, gives you good ideas, good wholesome ideas. These are better yourself ideas the better yourself and better the people around you I think that's important to focus on do what you can to make life better for yourself and for everybody around you follow the word of Christ can't go wrong can't go wrong well, this is going to be a little tricky, but it gets tough here. It's hard to peel. So you got to go around, just make little cuts. Heck, you get her tanned and make a coat for a little kid. <laughs> Slipped the whole thing right on. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. I imagine they have. Back in the day. When this was going to be their meat. And their clothing. Now we're starting to get underneath the armpit here. Which is good. Takes a little time. Take your time. It's not a race. I used to be able to skin muskrats in about five minutes or less. Probably a lot less. I don't know. I can't remember. I learned from my brother John. He used to pay me a quarter apiece. I couldn't wait to make that quarter apiece. After you've done this, you got to flesh it. And I'll tell you what works best for fleshing is a skinny knife. Those skinny knives, you can't beat them for that. They're flat to the hide, and you can almost go 
almost completely parallel to the skin with them. You just get that perfect angle. Skinny knife is a it's a knife that's straight metal from the tip of the blade to the heel on the handle. It's all one flat piece of metal. And boy, are they ever great for uh, fleshing. And I like them out in the woods because they don't hit on any trees, they don't make any noise. Your gun or your bow is not pounding on them when you're going through the bush, which is important. You've got to be quiet. Being quiet and smelling like the woods are two of the most major things for success when it comes to hunting big game. Nice, when I started hunting turkeys, like, oh man, this is easy. I don't have to worry about the smell so much. I don't have to worry about the wind. As long as I sit still, I'll be okay. That's another thing, no quick movements. Deer, bear, they notice a quick movement. If you move real slow on a deer that's not that pressured, He'll sit there and just watch it. But if he gets a whiff of, a whiff of you and some motion, he's going to take off. You see that tail starting to go up, he's going to bolt. <coughs> I'm just going to quarter these. And I'm just going to make ropes out of those. And we'll have that for four days. Make sandwiches. Stir fries. Oh, it would be fantastic. It is so tasty. Once you try it, and you get a sweet bear. Well, there was an old fella, lefty Phil Howard. Yeah, i got to warn you folks, this is a little gory, but... I'm going to show you how to cut around the head. Now, I've already cut around the ears. Okay, so right here, you just feel for the ear canal and you just slice right into it. And I'm getting down around the eyes here. And uh, the mouth is going to be in there. Like, you know, if you're going to get it mounted, you want to do it nice. And if you can't do it, just cut it here and let the taxidermist do it. You know, that's the best way to. Get that done. I'm just going to show you from what I'm going to do. And I'm not too worried about if I get a little hole here and there. Taxidermists can fix little stuff like that. But like this here. You know, you can fix that. It's no big deal. I don't want to do a lot, though. I'd rather be as careful as possible. But if you make a little hole, don't worry about it. Don't get too upset. Down here. See what we can do. Alright. Uh, it's going to be times when you probably won't see what's going on because I'm trying to maneuver around this thing. So just bear with me. Get your gloves back on. So pretty soon here, we're going to come up on the mouth. You can feel it. Feel his teeth right in there. And like I said, this is not a big trophy, so I'm not too worried about it. Here, you can feel his eyes. So if you're careful, cut that. You can cut it, and you'll have his eyelashes and everything on there. Things we do for little meat. Hey. So now I got, now you want to be careful with your fingers. The back of my thumb here is touching his teeth. And I'm just carefully going right down the side of his gums. Right. 
see his molars back there now. Feels jawbone there. Careful with that knife. They're still good. Feel for that eye, it's right there. side now. Watch your fingers. Nice and easy. And now we're getting down to the nose. And once you get down to the nose, which we're going to be down there shortly, you're just going to cut the cartilage off the end of his snout. So that whole nose is going to show up on that hide. That's what I'm doing now, cutting right through that cartilage. So I got his top lip and his nose right in there. You can see that. I'm getting right down to the end. Here's his bottom lip there, so I want to be careful taking this off. Remember, this was a roadkill. We don't like things going to waste. So, we're going to do our little own butcher job. And we can save the hide for somebody. And that's what we'll do. Alright. So when I turn that inside out, I got his nose the whole bit. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna take some time and get those things off. We'll be back. There you have it, all skinned out. We gotta take the guts out here shortly. We'll let them just hang overnight. I'll get a little rest. Let them hang for a few hours, not long. Get them cut up and get them frozen quick. Like I said, the longer you let them hang, the tougher and drier they get. So it's not like beef or venison. Now we'll have a look at that hide all stretched out here. <laughs> look at that there's a small little guy that's cased right so he's not split underneath 
So you can slip that over top of a, a form of some sort. But you'll notice, trip away, that, uh, you know, you got the ears, nose, everything is on there. You can see that. Got his paws, all his claws are still on there. Not the, the best skin job, but I don't really care if it's perfect. It's not, you know, I may just give it to the you know, hats for hides or give it to the taxidermist. But there you have it. It's all skinned out. Maybe, maybe send them off to the tannery if it's reasonable. We'll see. There you go, cased. Skin a bear cased, why not? Turn them inside out and flush them with the skinny knife and you're all set. Good luck hunting. Good luck uh, finding those fresh road kills. God bless. Okay, so I got about, oh, five or six hours of sleep. I'm ready to go. I just got done stretching the hide. I made a uh, um, stretcher out of iron one. Ironwood slap, sapling. Got that lash down there. The feet pulled out. I'll get my skinny knife later and we'll flesh that up as good as we can. And get the front paws out better. I had to cut them short last night. It was getting late. And we'll get this. I'll wait till later for that. It's out of the flies in here. It's a little bit cooler. And today, right after I go have a little clean up and get a cup of coffee, I will start butchering that. And that won't take long because I'm just going to do quarters and pop them right in the freezer. Awesome. Don't mind the mess, folks. Make some head cheese out of the skull. There is a ton of meat on this one. Look at that. Ton. Scraped a lot of it off. That's right. Tomorrow we'll make some nice head cheese. That's bear head cheese. From a black bear. Here we go, folks. That's our finished head cheese. Looking pretty appetizing, eh? Bon appetit. <laughs>